Hello everybody and welcome back to the Tiny Fibre Studio. My name's Bex and this is a channel all about knitting and spinning and lots of other crafty stuff. This video is the second in my series that's aimed at people who are new to spinning on a wheel. If you haven't already seen the first episode, which was just called How Spinning Wheels Work, I would highly recommend that you go and watch that one first because there will be some terminology which might be a little bit difficult to understand if you've not come across it before. So I've linked that video in the description. Go and watch that one first if you haven't already. Um, obviously, if you're already familiar with spinning wheel terminology, then welcome, pull up a chair. As a quick recap, the drive system is the combination of parts that allow the bobbin and flyer to move at different speeds from each other when there's no tension on the yarn, allowing the yarn to be wrapped around the bobbin. The force with which that yarn is wound on is called take up. When there is tension on the yarn, your flyer and bobbin move at the same pace, allowing you to add twist to your fibre. If you're getting too much twist in your yarn before it gets fed onto the bobbin, then you would increase the tension and that increases the strength of the take up. If you're getting the opposite, so you're not getting enough twist, then you would decrease the tension which makes the take up less strong and that will allow you to get more twist into your yarn. Keep in mind that the brake tension is just one variable in getting the right amount of twist. It's also affected by the speed of your treadling, the speed of your drafting and the whirl that you're using, which changes how fast the fly is rotating, among many other things. We'll look a little bit more at troubleshooting in another video. There are three types of tensioning systems that you're gonna come across on the spinning wheels. Scotch tension, which is also known as single drive flyer lead or flyer lead. Irish tension, which is known as single drive bobbin lead or bobbin lead and double drive. Most wheels are set up so that they use one of those different tensioning systems. There are quite a lot that are able to use two and some spinning wheels can use all three interchangeably. I'm gonna be using a Shack Matchless and a Luette S10C to demonstrate these different drive systems. I'll use the Matchless for Scotch Tension and Double Drive, and I'll use the Luette for the Irish Tension. I'm gonna try and show you all of these as slowly as I can because unless you're drafting your fiber using a method called long draw, the drive systems just work too quickly for you to see what's happening. Just to avoid confusion, I'm also just using the leader for the demonstrations and that's the piece of yarn that you tie to your bobbin to get you started. The components might look a little bit different between my wheels and your wheels, but essentially the components and the way that the drive system works is pretty much the same. Let's start with Scotch tension. This is also known as single drive flyer lead because the drive band is a single loop which drives the flyer while the brake band is applying friction to the bobbin. If I turn the drive wheel with tension applied to the yarn as though I'm drafting and therefore holding onto it while I'm spinning. The brake band slips and the bobbin is kind of dragged along by the flyer and it spins, allowing me to add twist without the yarn being pulled onto the bobbin. You can see that the blue tape here stays right in the middle of the flyer arms. So you can see that it's rotating in tandem with the flyer. If I let go of the yarn so that there's no tension on it, the flyer turns, but the bobbin stays still and that allows the yarn to be drawn in. I can adjust how aggressively the yarn is being taken up by changing the amount of friction that the brake band is applying to the bobbin. There'll be a knob or a peg to change how tight the brake band is. And on most Scotch tension wheels, there'll be a spring attached to the brake band, either a spring or some kind of rubber band or something. The more stretch that is, the more pressure is being applied. You want to avoid there being too much pressure being applied because it will start to get really difficult to treadle, but also really difficult to draft your fibre because you'll feel like you have to hang on to it for dear life. 
On a few wheels, the braking mechanism for the bobbin is actually a block rather than a band or a loop of cord. It's not particularly common, but there are some wheels out there like some spinolution wheels which use that system. On Scotch and Irish tension systems, if the wheel was designed to run with a cotton or linen drive band rather than a stretchy one, there should be a way to adjust how tight that band is to make sure that power is transferring from the drive wheel to the flyer or bobbin in the most efficient way. Scotch tension is a great all-rounder and it's also very easy for beginners to pick up. It's easy to make a wide variety of yarns, but as the bobbin gets more full, you do need to make those small adjustments to the brake tension to keep the take up consistent. In many countries, it's also the one that the majority of spinners are most familiar with, which can make it a lot easier to get help if you need it. In Irish tension, the drive band is still a single loop, but this time it's driving the bobbin via the whirl that's on the end of the bobbin itself and the tension or the friction is being applied to the flyer. So it's the opposite of Scotch tension. On most Irish tension wheels that you're likely to come across, the brake will be some kind of leather strap across the orifice end of the flyer. I'm using a Louette S10C, which is kind of a classic example of what Irish tension looks like. So if I turn the drive wheel, as soon as I apply tension to the yarn, the flyer gets dragged along by the bobbin and it spins, allowing me to add twist. When there's no tension on the yarn, the flyer stops turning and that winds the yarn onto the bobbin. To adjust the take up, you change how tight the brake band is on the flyer. Usually that's done with a little screw in the leather strap on the orifice. Often, especially at the start of a project when there's nothing actually on the bobbin itself, you might find that you don't even need any tension on that brake strip because the friction, the resistance that's provided by the weight of the flyer and bobbin is actually enough on its own. While we're talking about Irish tension, here's a fun fact. There's absolutely no evidence to suggest that Irish tension originated in Ireland. Um, actually, according to Ply Magazine's bobbin lead issue, it's more likely that it originated in the Alpine regions of Europe. And there's also no evidence to suggest that Scotch tension originated in Scotland either. In fact, most Scottish wheels actually use double drive, not Scotch tension. Irish tension is also pretty easy to adjust and it has a fairly strong take up, which actually makes it really easy for beginners to get a feel for it. Even if you're an experienced spinner, it's great for bulky to medium yarns. And lots of people really love it for plying and art yarn as well. But making very fine yarns requires some tips and tricks or possibly a specific flyer just because of that really aggressive take up. Irish tension wheels also tend to be easier to treadle and that's definitely something that a lot of people like. Just like with Scotch tension, you do have to make some slight adjustments as you fill up the bobbin to keep the take up the same. But from my personal experience, I tend to find that I need less adjustment on an Irish tension wheel compared to a Scotch tension one. Also, top tip, Irish tension wheels can double as a bobbin winder. So if you're a fan of rewinding your yarn before plying, this might be useful for you. In double drive, the drive band loops twice around the drive wheel in a figure of eight. One loop goes over the whirl, which turns the flyer, and the other loop goes over the bobbin. When there's tension on the yarn, the drive band slips in both whirls and the bobbin and flyer move in sync, allowing more twists to be put in. The drive band over the flyer slips less because the groove in the flyer is more of a V shape, which grips the drive band better than the U-shaped groove that's on the bobbin. When I release tension on the yarn, both the bobbin and flyer are still being turned, but because the groove in the bobbin is smaller, the bobbin spins faster, allowing that yarn to be wound on. So here you can see that the blue tape now rotates a couple of times for each time that the flyer rotates. The bigger the difference in diameter between the whirl on the bobbin and the whirl on the flyer, the stronger the take up. You can fine tune this take up by adjusting how tight the drive band is. 
Somewhere on the wheel there's going to be a knob which tilts or moves the flyer assembly or sometimes the whole mother of all to make it further from or closer to the drive wheel and that in turn changes the tension on the drive band. The looser the drive band the easier it is for the band to slip and the lighter the take up becomes. The tighter the drive band is the harder it is for the band to slip and the stronger the take up is. The biggest bonus of double drive for many people is that they find the way that double drive is set up has very consistent take up and that encourages them to spin a consistent yarn. It is a little bit trickier to adjust to the perfect tension for your yarn but once you've found the optimal setting you don't normally have to make that many adjustments to the tension as you fill up the bobbin. The other advantage of double drive having that really smooth consistent take up is that if you're spinning something like very fine lace weight in quite a delicate fibre this is a great option because you don't get any sudden take up like you do on some of the single drive systems. This does make it a little bit less optimal for spinning with techniques like long draw where you kind of need twist one moment and then take up the next. It's not impossible by any means, you just need to give it a little bit of extra time to wind on and some people find that they have to modify their long draw technique a little bit. It's also worth knowing that most double drive systems can be modified to run with scotch tension instead so sometimes that's a better option for people. If you're interested in a very in-depth breakdown of the maths behind double drive I would strongly recommend that you take a look at the Alden Amos Big Book of Hand Spinning from pages I think it's 218 to 230 he goes super in-depth into the maths so if you're interested that's definitely the resource to go to. So which one of these three different drive systems is the best? As with anything else in hand spinning, the answer is it depends. It mostly depends on the kind of yarn that you're aiming to make. Pretty much any kind of wheel can make pretty much any kind of yarn with the right techniques, but each drive system definitely has its specialities. Be warned, I am going to massively generalize here for the sake of clarity. Scotch tension is very adaptable, so it can handle the majority of different yarn weights while Irish tension is more suited to medium to bulky yarns but you might struggle to create fine yarns because of its stronger take up. Meanwhile double drive with its gentle take up is best for medium to fine yarns and you might find it challenging to make bulkier yarns. So there you go, I hope you found this useful. Hello Safi. If it was helpful please do click the like button underneath this video, uh, don't forget to click on the subscribe button if you would like to make it easier to find my videos and if you would like to be notified when I upload a new one don't forget to press the little bell icon as well. Let me know in the comments which type of drive system you prefer for the type of spinning that you do but also I'm really intrigued to know whether there's a particular tensioning system in the area where you live that is more popular than the others. I know that in the guilds that I go to, I'd say over 50% is Scotch tension, probably nearer to maybe 70 or 80%. Um, then I would say it's double drive and then Irish tension, but I know it's different in different countries. So I'm intrigued to know what the most popular option is where you are. And of course, if you have any other questions or any other comments, please do leave those down below. Um, I'm really interested to see what you think of these first couple of videos and I want to try and integrate any other questions into the videos I'm going to do in the future as well. If you're a beginner and you haven't hello, um, chosen your first spinning wheel yet, um, I do have a video coming very soon about that exact process, how you kind of narrow down which spinning wheel to get for your first one. Um, that will be coming soon. If I've already uploaded it by the time you get to watching this video, I will leave a link at the end and also in the description as well. So thanks for watching, I hope you found this useful and I will see you again soon in another video. Take care and enjoy your spinning.